North B is a national fiber optic cable, so it's the same as having the national highways. We wanted to have a homogeneous government-owned backbone. ICT Authority has managed to deploy over 9,000 kilometers of fiber. In many countries, ICT is an integral part of the teaching and learning processes. I want to use internet to learn chess so that I can become the Grand Master of Chess one day. North B is a national fiber optic cable, so it's the same as having the national highways, so that all our data, all our connectivity, with all government institutions, schools, hospitals, all that is done under a backbone. If you look globally, everybody has gone digital. The biggest companies now in the world, they're all information and knowledge based. It's all digital. The foundation of that is the fiber uh, cable. The North Bay uh, project uh, actually started all the way back in the year 2007. We wanted to have a homogeneous government-owned backbone for purposes of ensuring security, for purposes of ensuring maintenance, and uh, for uh, trying to bring down the cost uh, for government. ICT Authority has managed to deploy over 9,000 kilometers of fiber across the country, targeting all government main offices, our county headquarters, and sub-county headquarters. This is meant to enhance service delivery uh, to the citizen by government. So as we automate government services, we intend to ensure that these services can be accessed across the country by the citizen uh, through ICT, which stands as an enabler. As you know, Kenya is blessed. We have almost uh, seven submarine cables landing into the country and to disseminate that to the rest of the country. The government initiated the National Optic Fiber Backbone Infrastructure Project, which has been done in three phases. Phase one, uh, which covered about 4,300 kilometers, uh, covered the then provincial uh, headquarters. This was uh, between uh, 2006 and completed in 2009. It covered the eight provincial headquarters and along the way covered 50 towns. Uh, at that time, it was supervised by the then Telecom Kenya. Then we moved to phase two. We had the new constitution, 2010, uh, and the government felt right that uh, we have phase two, which then covered all the 47 county headquarters. Uh, so that was phase two, and that was uh, undertaken uh, between 2013 2017. Phase two uh, covered about 2,100 kilometers. Then we had phase two E, which further went to cover the sub-county level. So all sub-counties have been covered and the distance uh, of the fiber cable for phase two E was 2,500. The relationship with North B started in the year 2018 when they were deploying uh, what we call North B 2 E where we deployed about 200 kilometers of the fiber infrastructure across the country. So we have now maintaining about 650 kilometers across the country, uh, mainly in uh, this region of northeastern, uh, eastern and uh, coastal side. So right now we are also doing the extensions to connect uh, all government agencies across the country. So with NOFBI, it has generated not only revenue for the company, but generated a lot of opportunities for young people to create uh, uh, employment and, uh, and and them bringing changes to their families as well. Tuko wengi sana. Sasa hii ukipita njia ukitembea mimi peke yangu as a supervisor I have a lot of casuals waka samba watakuja wanakuja chini yangu. Na every machine ni kama hivyo. So ukiangalia the way tunaenda hivi na machines ni karibu sita na zingine ziko njiani zinakuja. Eh? Sai so far, we have around 70 to 75 people. I used to work in uh, Turkana North. And I remember when we used to have uh, exercises like now the registration, uh, the Huduma number registration, um, the census exercise. Um, it used to be a bit difficult for the officers who have gone to the ground to get that data. Because now sending to where it's supposed to be sent, it was a challenge. 
uh, used to probably come uh, in the evening, then look for a place where they can now send that data. But uh, here in Bomet, um, we, are, we are advantaged because uh, most of the areas are covered by internet. So uh, apart from sending, you can also capture events in real time and also communicate. You also not need to necessarily work from the office. You can work from even somewhere else, even in, a, in an event. You can be participating in an event, but you are reporting to your supervisor on what is on the ground. This office mainly monitors internet in government facilities to make sure that they have service. Now, if we connect that to the common mananchi, I can give an example with a place like Huduma Center. We have Huduma Centers across different counties. They can be able to get like police clearance, there's birth certificates, there's death certificates, there's uh, passports. Yes, all that we have to make sure that all those places are connected because if they don't have internet, then services stop. On a daily basis, we serve 2,000 uh, clients that is uh, in Duma Center Narrow. But nationally and countrywide, uh, among the other 52 Duma Centers, we serve around 50,000 clients and citizens of this republic. Internet connectivity is very crucial in service delivery at the Uduma Center Narok, and it's one of the innovations that have been done by the Uduma Kenya program. For example, we have the SBA services, that is uh, the service by appointment, whereby all the clients that are coming into the center, they book for the appointment. That has been enabled by the uh, the government offering us very strong connectivity. And then we also have the track my service, whereby all the clients that have been served and they, when their documents are ready, they are being notified to their phones. And this has been a key pillar in our service delivery because it reduces the, the time uh, that maybe the customers could be coming here. So uh, you find that at the end, we have uh, offered the services in an efficient way. The fiber connectivity in education, particularly in Bomet County, has benefited us a lot. Our schools have benefited, the offices have benefited, and I think many stakeholders in this uh, manner, that initially data would take a longer period of time to get to its destination. With that connectivity, it has enhanced efficiency, effectiveness, and the speed. Uh, through which we communicate from point A to B. Look at the NEMIS program, for example, or the NHIF uh, program by the Minister of Education. A kid, a kid in a school, a far-flung school of the, the county, the ministry is able to know that that kid requires uh, medical attention at 10 weeks within minutes and they process. Uh, the benefits for this child, for example. Uh, that, that, that to me is very good and positive because then it has speeded up uh, the rate at which we serve the public, our stakeholders and especially the children. Most of our programs and uh, platforms have been running well uh, courtesy of the NOFB connection actually. I think even retrieving of the files, they, because it is, uh, it is electronically based, it is it has eased it. The programs that we had initially that were not on uh, on uh, accessible platforms are uh, now, now accessible. Uh, we have the other integrated programs for the government that are now working together. Like the we have the parks that is now integrated together with the DHC and uh, other programs that are within the health facility. Enough the internet has a capacity of 150 uh, Mbps. This is a capacity that is able to sustain us as the staffs and also the needs of the patient that comes to Garissa PGH. Now, because we have the stable internet, we use the NHIF portal to claim patient bills and other insurance products. It has boosted our revenue. I can say maybe by around 70%. As you've seen, the president's uh, big four agenda, if it is uh, healthcare, you must have all the connectivity. Recently in Isiolo, we went and we tested telemedicine. Telemedicine allows the you know, doctors in Kenyatta Hospital to work with the doctors in Isiolo. They don't have to travel. And again, they're using the fiber for that uh, purpose. 
Um, so, so there are many, many applications that uh, can be done. If you look at uh, the challenge we've had with uh, drought and even people who have you know, had challenges with farming and food, we've used mobile technology to send money, uh, you know, cash transfers, that within uh, an hour we are able to send over a billion shillings to over 150,000 Kenyans using uh, technology. Officers are, have been able now to access information. They have been uh, able now to serve the public better. For example, a member of public may need a P3 form. A P3 form is just now you go to the internet, you just uh, Google, then you print, you give the member of public. So it, it has reduced the cost to the member of public and even to the government. Because in the previous days, going to Lokichar, which is a wide quarter, is roughly 80 kilometers from here. So imagine going to 80 kilometers and the 80 kilometers have now been saved to sitting down and sending a message. So it has reduced the cost of communication and it has reduced, uh, uh, in, it has increased the access to the information speed. So it is a win-win in terms of government offering uh, better services. Uh, you can now get uh, uh, fast broadband internet uh, in a remote town in Nadapal or Lodwa. As, as, as you'd get uh, in Nairobi. So for government offices that is done and the private sector also has uh, uh, half the capacity within the network really to roll out their services and this is being done on a commercial terms with NOFB on an open access model. During the COVID uh, period, majority of uh, government employees and private sector employees uh, were working virtually from their homes. And um, as Safaricom, we experienced a surge in the demand for fiber to the homes. And most of these fiber to the homes are enabled by the government uh, fiber because we splice off to a particular home. And then it joins the government fiber to our corner. The people who are running the economy out there want to be able to push iData on real time uh, to the metros. To be able to do that, fiber is the answer, and of course, Novi comes in anti to ensuring that uh, this is accessed and is available. The partnership within the Ministry of Education, Ministry of Industry, ICT, all the different ministries that we work together on, even the Ministry of Transport, ensuring that the conduits. As they build the roads, there is a space for fiber. So working as one government, that partnership has been extremely critical. But of course, uh, in this day and age, you cannot work alone. So we've got different partners under the United Nations. We've got UNESCO, who we've been working with. We've got UNICEF with the GIGA and other uh, programs such as the Generation Unlimited. And then even the businesses who are away, uh, you know, great uh, partners and uh, you know, implementers of this technology that, uh, that we're working on. Bringing connectivity and now think about, for instance, rural off-grid communities. Now, of course, you need now also to bring energy because many of these communities don't have energy access and ICT requires energy. And, and now you get a very interesting perspective. The moment you combine renewable energy and ICT access for communities that are off-grid, their whole situation changes dramatically. You, you pull communities immediately into the 21st century. By bringing energy access and ICT access to communities, you will see a, a very broad range of socio-economic spin-off initiatives that should be taken up by the community members themselves preferably by women and youth, to set up their own small-scale businesses. Partnership is very important. And uh, not only uh, we working with the other government agencies, we want the communities to work with us. For example, where we have spent, uh, uh, where we have laid cables, we want the communities to respect those cables, work with us to protect them. Uh, rather than destroying them. I would like to officially launch the school net pilot program in Maragema and Karundas and the 11 other schools across the country.
in many countries, ICT is an integral part of the teaching and learning processes at all levels, from kindergarten to PhD level at university level. We know that you conceptualize better when you see. And we have seen students seeing on a smart board how an eye operates, what is composed of, and so on and so forth. A while ago, my own dream was to go to Japan, but most courses are offered in Japanese, so I was worried about how I'm going to do it here. Every weekend, for about 30 minutes, I'll come here to the comp lab and do about 30 minutes of Japanese. I've been going to websites and YouTube channels such as learnjapanese.101, and I've been using some books online such as Genki and some apps such as Busu, which is a language learning app. It's really helped me in my language development in Japanese. I have to tell ICT authority that they're making great steps in this country. You're helping children achieve their dreams. You're a great blessing to all of us. In Kenya, all these schools, Arigato Gozaimas ICT authority. For now, we have chosen a few schools in various regions as a pilot. Um, together with ICTA, we are looking to you know, run this program in a few schools before we scale it up across the country. Hardware are classified into input devices, output devices, storage devices, which I hope you know. With the internet connection in our school, we are likely to ensure our girls get information or get the resources they need as required. For example, in subjects like biology, chemistry, there are complex issues for learners to understand they need to see. So teachers in those sciences subjects can use simulation programs to teach, which will simplify the learning in those complex concepts. We are grateful to the ICT authority uh, for considering Sironga girls. I want to use internet to learn chess so that I can become the grandmaster of chess one day. It's time to say I'm done. They're losing through books. I'll be heading to my computer to utilize the blessings of gratitude. Thank you for the blessing. ICT authority. Gratitude. Wow. I want to thank the ICT authority for a well thought out program doing a pilot program in 13 schools and I believe it's a, a step towards extending the internet to many other schools in Kenya because this is the game changer whose time has come and I'm happy they have seized this opportunity. They have a work plan that they're going to implement in the interest of the government and the people of Kenya so that we compete with the best of the best in the world. I'm very happy. These young learners, they were born into what is called a tech-savvy environment, an environment where technology is part of them. So there is no way we can remove from them, but we need to shape these young learners so that they can use this technology very well to enhance their skills and also for their business opportunities. So it is a way to go, and that is where the world is going. And I think as Kenya and as a government, uh, this new initiative will really revolutionize uh, education system in this country as well as build the required competency when it comes to digital skills for our future human capital. Digitizing Kenya, making it a knowledge-based economy is not a one-off. It's something that we must continue. And therefore as Kenyans we must choose the right leaders who will ensure that the legacy we have built will continue.